Well, uh, welcome to this uh, short talk with the Indian author, Aravind Jayan, who is a uh, guest of the book fair and has traveled all the way here from Bangalore yesterday. Uh, welcome. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Um, Aravind has written this novel, which is just out in Swedish. It's called Tonnorspar har kul på allmän plats. The original title is Teenage Couple Have Fun Outdoors. And it's a terrific uh, original debut novel about um, sex and shame in India, contemporary India. So Aravind, um, we should say also that it's translated into Swedish by Ylva Mörk. Um, can you start by just telling us what is the what is the situation that we encounter here in the beginning of the book? I mean, we have a we have a a house with a family in it. It's almost like a pressure cooker. Something is really not right. Uh, can you walk us through what happens in the opening scene? Uh, sure. So in the opening scene, this family, the family that's entered in the book. They've just bought a new car and the oldest son hasn't come down to see the new car. And this is a big deal for the family because buying a car is a, it's a matter of pride for them. Uh, but the oldest son hasn't come down to see the car and then they soon realize one by one that the reason he hasn't come down is because he is dealing with much bigger problems. Basically, he has discovered the fact that he's, he and his girlfriend are in a video uh, that someone has filmed. Uh, and the video is of them sort of making out in public, not entirely having sex, but like uh, third base, I would say. Uh, I think I think it's uh, described as sex adjacent. Sex adjacent. <laughs> so something resembling sex. Yeah, yeah, sex. They're adjacent. touching each other. Yeah, oh. yeah they're getting pretty handsy. <laughs> and there's a video of that online, and they're slowly discovering. And people are more and more people are discovering it. Uh, and it's narrated by. How do I say this? Uh, narrated by, so the person in the video, his name is Srinath, it's narrated by Srinath's brother. And he is sort of like the person who, he is the middleman who sort of uh, talks to the brother, make sure he's all right, make sure the parents are all right, uh, sort of really caught in the middle of the situation. So it's, it's really a novel about um, a, a terrible situation. I mean, as a reader, you project yourself into this and you think, this is just so horrible if this happened to, to me or to, to anyone I know. I mean, to be exposed in that way, obviously, you know, the, the context is that uh, it's, it's difficult to, for them to find space at home to, to be together. So, as I take it, some people, you know, go outside to meet with their, with their girlfriend or boyfriend and maybe in a park or in a public space. And they've just been very, very unlucky that someone has caught them on film and before they know it, this clip is on porn sites all over the internet yeah. and it's ticking upwards the, the number of, of views. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's really the, the starting point for this novel which is about a family and the fallout and the consequences of this happening in that family. Um, why did you want to write this story? Well, uh, a couple of reasons really. One was that uh, there were always these videos like in high, when I was in school and later when I was in college there were always these videos that people would keep talking about, explicit videos that and voyeuristic videos that somehow got online. Uh, and there'd be and, and it would be it would sort of become like an urban legend. Uh, like who are these people in the video? Uh, what became of them? How did this happen? Uh, so I was interested in the urban legend part of it. So I actually wanted to explore like if something went down something like this went down in my family or in the families of someone I knew how exactly would it play out? Another thing that interested me about this topic was that, uh, well, the idea of shame, really. Uh, because sh in India, shame, I'm generalizing, of course, uh, but in India, shame really is uh, a, a driving force. Uh, and it dictates so much of what we do, like who we get married to, like uh, what kind of jobs you do, uh, what you study, uh, all of that stuff. And uh, I was, and, and, and the reason shame was in the forefront of my mind back then was because I was working on the book or I was trying to write a book and I was so ashamed of the fact that I was trying to write instead of doing something more important like my friends, like engineering or, or, or being a doctor. You, you were on your own best example. <laughs> yeah. So I thought maybe I should, I should write about that. Yeah. Um, 
But that's that's really interesting. I mean, because uh, 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 I, I know you've said or you've written somewhere that you feel that if if you were to name one emotion that sort of governs life in India or Indian society, it's shame. And I mean, say more about that. Why? Why? What is your what is your take on that? Why? Why is that the the thing that comes to mind first? Um, why is uh, I'm that's a difficult question to say why. Uh, I'm not sure it's a single thing. I think it's the way we have been brought up uh, it's, uh, since. Uh, I mean, it, I, I think it's the way we have been brought up. And uh, but I mean, shame is about hiding something, right? Yes. I mean, that's the main aspect. Is I don't want you to see all what of me. I'm all of yeah, me. All I want you me. to exactly. see some aspects, and some aspects should stay hidden. I so it's very so. much a, you know a question of what's private and what's public, right? Exactly. Which I is also the theme of this yeah. book. Yeah, I think it's also about uh, having control over your own story, yeah. and uh, which is what happens. Uh, so throughout the book, everyone is trying to frame their own narrative, and what happens when gossip spreads is basically you lose the control of your own narrative, and what happens when it uh, spreads on a much larger scale as it does on the internet is that you lose complete control of your story, uh, you lose entire control of your story. So throughout the book, uh, different people are trying to gain back that control. Yeah. I think, uh, I, in a sense, I think, yeah, shame is about what is private and what is public and what you can control and what others are allowed to see And, as and maybe well. in, a, in a sense also what is, what is unbearable. I mean, what, what, is, what is the thing that, uh, I mean, a lot of great authors have written about shame and it's a, it's a, of course it's a very, you know, human emotion that is interesting to, to think about. But um, in, in the sense that what, 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 what would be completely unbearable if they knew about me? you know, whatever that is. I mean, it's different for different people. Yeah. And uh, I think for me, one of the things that interested me about the book was that throughout uh, the entire story, people are constantly trying to find that line for themselves. Yeah. They're trying to figure out if this is a big deal. And that is something that even I struggled with when I was writing the book. When I started, uh, to uh, started on the topic, I, I kept thinking, wait, why, why should I really be writing about this? Like in this day and age, is this sex tape really uh, that big a deal? Like does it really deserve 200 pages of fiction? And it's so that funny that you use the word sex tape because it sounds so yeah, antiquated. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, exactly, I guess, I guess exactly. the, uh, that's the modern equivalent. It's a, yeah. a clip that goes on Facebook. It's the modern day yeah. sex tape. Um, so I think that's the question that the characters are asking themselves as well. Like, is it a big deal? I think at different points, like even, even the parents sort of ask themselves, like, is this a big deal? Uh, should we be, how much force should we be applying to uh, solve this stuff? But the, the really interesting aspect of this is, is uh, of course, how generational it is. Um, I mean, because it's also a question of uh, a country that has a lot of um, uh, uh, ideas about, uh, I mean, like we said, shame and honor and what's appropriate and not appropriate. And then you have this generation that's our age, I guess, uh, that's been brought up on social media. And you have uh, other norms, uh, values there, like uh, openness, uh, transparency, showing everything, uh, making fun of everything. So it's really the tension and the, the clash between, I guess, value si different value systems yeah, yeah. is what these characters get caught up in. Uh, and they're trying to navigate, and it's really difficult mm. for them to do that. I think the thing about India is sort of like uh, you have all these different pieces, and all these pieces are changing at different paces. Uh, and at any given point, you have you're standing on more than one piece. So it's sort of like you're being pulled apart in different directions and, and different, different, different pieces of it are changing at different paces and you have to constantly adapt based on where you are and who you're talking to. And I guess it's a global thing as well. I think, I guess that is a global thing, but the, but the number of pieces, the number of cultures that you have, the number of religions, the number of, uh, I mean, the, the generational gap, all yeah. of that stuff. And, and it becomes quite difficult. I mean, it's second nature to us, but... Uh, you mean it's something that you, you're so used to adapting so used to, to different it, environments yeah, that yeah. it's almost like a, it's like a skill that you don't even think yeah, about. Um, yeah, you but it also sounds really exhausting, I think. <laughs> it is extremely exhausting, yeah. Jesus. Because I was thinking about when you said they're trying to figure out if it's a big deal. Uh, well, to the people in the clip who are actually the victims of this, um, they're trying to tell themselves that, no, it's not a big deal. I mean, yeah, okay, I'm in this video, who cares, right? Th that's the strategy they're using to protect themselves, like, yeah. in a way. Whereas for the parents, yeah, it's a huge deal, which is also in this book to do with class, right? And their sort of position, which is a little bit, uh, 
they've uh, oh, they're now middle class, but th they were th they weren't always middle class, and and so it, they have a kind of status, social status, that they're very uh, keen on preserving. So this could be a threat to that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So how do you see how do you see class factoring into all of this? Sir? Well, uh, like at the beginning, as I said, they buy that car, and that is a big deal for them, and they are trying to project themselves as as the educated, uh, well-to-do people who have brought up children in the way that society thinks they should be brought up. And then all of a sudden they go ahead and do this. Mm. Uh, they're thrown well, they, they don't really do anything. They, they get... Well, from the yeah. parents' <laughs> point of view, yeah. I mean, they're well, also victims in a way. Yes, so. but the parents definitely don't see it as yeah. that way. To them, it's like, why do you have to go outdoors? Why do you have to do any of this stuff in the first place? Uh, so you, what, you should be studying, you should be in college. Sit in your room and study yeah, until you, you sit in your somehow room and study. find someone you can marry. And yeah. Then, yeah. Oh. That should be your life. Mm. And then instead you go ahead and do this and then you have the goal to defend yourself and act like it's not a big deal, it's completely unacceptable to them. Uh, uh, and, and for the kids, uh, for the people in the video, as you were saying, their defense mechanism is absolutely acting like it's not a big deal because they know that if they show the fact that they're ashamed to the rest of the world, then there's nothing really, there's nothing standing between them and the people who want to talk about it and all of that stuff. Yeah. But I, I was thinking about that aspect of, you know, are, 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 they, are they victims in a way? Because it, it, when I read this book, I, I really feel very uh, strongly that they are, I mean, there's a huge vulnerability in, in what they experience. I mean, they're out there for everyone to see. Um, everyone turns their back on them, uh, their families, and so on. And but no one really has that perspective in the novel. I mean, not even really the brother. I mean, he's he kind of goes both ways. But um, when they try to report it to the police, for instance, it's just shame on you, shame on you. You know, you shouldn't have done this. But no one really sees that aspect of like it must be really terrible to be in this situation. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think a part of that is also because uh, the couple in the video actively t reject pity because, uh, again, it's their defense mechanism to say that it's not a big deal, it shouldn't be a thing at all. Uh, the parents or anyone from that generation definitely don't think of it as, as think of them as victims. In fact, they think of themselves as victims, yeah. Uh, rather. Yeah, yeah. Do you think this is a novel about vi victim, victim culture in a way as well? I mean, in this very specific context, like... Um, uh, because, I mean, it, it's about parents and kids, right? It's about um, uh, generations, like we said, but it's also really about um, pa these parents' difficulties in, in, in taking on that role a of a parent, in a way. I mean, in, in, in the sense of saying, like, look, you made a mistake, but let's move on and so on. Instead, it's, you've done this to me, you know? And I, I, I guess that's a, a maybe culturally specific thing uh, that would be interesting to hear you say a bit more about that. I'm surprised. Uh, I mean, I don't know how it would be uh, outside as well. Do uh, pa will parents get blamed in Sweden if something like this happens? Or I mean, I, I it would be really interesting to to set the story in Sweden. I mean, of course, it's it would be about the same things. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think that just the the context is so different, you know. Yeah. That I don't think that. I mean, it would be different in every family depending on the background. But um, it, it's uh, it's hard to see that the parents would be so. Uh, would be so ashamed, but I mean, no. Yeah, I, I guess they wouldn't be as belligerent. That is one thing that these, the parents in the book also realize that the fact that they have, like, so much has changed around them that towards the end, the fact that they have been so belligerent is, becomes a marker of the fact that they are not uh, educated or classy enough. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as they're told towards the end, or as they come to realize at the end, if you were more modern, more educated, more with it, or more hip, uh, you would have reacted in a completely different way. You would have been more mellow about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so everyone is sort of thrown by it. Yeah. And it's a very, I really want to recommend this book. Uh, it, it's so moving uh, and it's very, actually very funny as well and, uh, and sad. I mean, it's sad because in the end, without spoiling what happens, this family really struggles to, well, the relationships start to crumble, let's say it's difficult for them to stay connected to each other. So, I mean, we talked about shame, and I mean, it's, it's, um, it's a wedge, um, a shield that gets 
wedged in and, and then it's very, very difficult for them to, yeah. I guess, in a way, continue as a family or what would you say? Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think that one of the sad things is that with topics like uh, sex or, or shame or when something like this happens, you, uh, like in India, or again, I'm generalizing, but we don't usually, at least with parents, you don't usually have the level of communication that you ideally should have. And when, when it's something like this, it becomes quite difficult. Like a lot of it is lost in translation. And, and so it, it is absolutely a wedge. Uh, the bridge is completely lost. The bridge. Yeah. 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 And um, I mean, it's, we don't know what happens to these young people after the book ends, but do you, do you see them <laughs> have, having a, 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 f a, a good future? Or I mean, uh, in your mind, is it like, uh, are they lo is it lost forever? Is there some hope that there will be some reconnection? Well, I think, I think the thing is, you, after a certain point, you get used to almost anything. Uh, so I'm sure soon enough they'll get used to the fact that this has happened to them. Mm. It becomes, again, it's a, it's a matter of time, right? So once, uh, like I was saying earlier, it's a matter of having, gaining control of your own story. So with time, I'm sure that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And once you have control over your own story, it becomes much easier to live it. Mm. Yeah. And I, I guess people, another thing about the internet culture is I guess people lose interest. So that is both sad and nice in a way. You mean like everyone is uh, on something at the same time and that's yeah. what everyone's talking about and then they can switch to... And then switch they move to, on. Yeah. And then it, they're Isn't sort that of also like a feature of... So, I mean, that's a huge so feature of yeah. social media, right? Yeah. Like everyone is concerned with this particular topic or this particular debate or something and then you move on to move the next... On, yeah. Yeah. And then the sad and thing is could, sort of yeah. like the people who have made a big deal about the earlier topic are sort of now left hanging thinking, wait, why did we make such a fuss when no one absolutely cares anymore? Yeah, and then what happens to those people who, well, it might be good good for them. The attention moves on and they can get on with their lives, I guess, yeah, in a, in yeah, a sense. Yeah. Okay, um, I wish we could talk more because it's fun to talk to you, but I think we have to start wrapping up uh, the, this conversation. Um, of course, Aravind's book is available in Swedish. You can buy it and you can get it signed. And do read this book. It's terrific. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.